After the box arrives at your facility, remove the contents and spread them out on an open surface to ensure that everything has arrived properly. These parts include the hopper drive unit with 12 volt power, the mounting motor cover, the hinge bracket attached to the motor, the mounting motor bracket, the direct replacement bracket, the bearings that mount to the replacement bracket, the control box, and inside it is the wireless remote control, the hard wire manual switch with self-tapping screws, wire extension connectors for your quick connects, three-quarter inch shrink wrap kits, a package of wired clamps and screws, a tractor wiring kit including a 50 amp breaker, eyelets, and 25 feet of wire, eyelets for the motor, a package of two and a quarter inch grade eight mounting bolts with lock nuts and washers, male and female plugs, a U-joint, two hole straps, a manual crank adapter, a package of rubber grommets, six pieces of five foot long PVC conduits including 90s and couplers, quarter inch bolts, washers and lock nuts, drive couplers, a new axle if replacement is needed, hex weldments, universal manual switch mounting bracket, and universal manual switch mounting bracket bolts, nuts, and washers. The tools that you'll need for the installation include a drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit, a 3 8 inch size impact wrench, a sawzall with a metal blade, a two pound hammer, a socket set, cable cutters, a standard screwdriver, vice grip clamps, two 7 16 inch, one 9 16 inch, and one half inch wrenches, a 7 32 Allen wrench, a grinder with a buffing wheel, a tape measure, welding equipment, a soapstone, a heating torch, and safety glasses and gloves. The first step in installation is to measure the axle and place a mark in the center. Then measure five inches out on both the left and right hand side of the center mark and make new marks. These new marks are where you will cut the axle. The goal here is to remove a total of 10 inches from the existing axle. To remove the existing bracket from the trailer, the huck bolts will have to be cut off. Once the huck bolts have been removed, take a hammer and knock the original assembly free. Once it is off, then knock out the mounting bolts. Depending on the trailer model, you may need to reuse the existing bracket, and if so, you will need to remove the manual crank gearing and lock. In most cases, you will be using the direct replacement bracket that comes with the kit. Next, connect the motor pivot bracket to the mounting bracket by using the one quarter inch mounting bolts. In this order, slide the washer on first, insert the bolt, slide on the other washer, then hand tighten down the lock nut. Leave the bracket hand tight until the actual positioning of the bracket is done. To install the motor bracket assembly, you'll need to insert two quarter inch mounting bolts onto the bracket by first placing the washers on the bolts, sliding the bolts onto the plate, sliding on another washer, and then hand tightening down the lock nuts. Place the mounting motor bracket in the same place as the original bracket and slide on the quarter inch mounting bolts. As before, a washer is slid on before the bolt is inserted into the mounting hole. Then, a washer is slid on before hand tightening down a lock nut. The next step would be to replace the hopper U-joint drive axle if it needs to be replaced. In this case, the U-joint drive did not need to be replaced. The kit does include a new U-joint and axle. Next, slide the axle through the pilot bearing and line it up with the original cut axle. Use a vise clamp to hold the mounting motor bracket in place. Mark and cut the axle an inch past the pilot bearing. After cutting the axle to the correct length, insert the coupler onto the original axle. Insert the new cut axle back through the pilot bearing and insert it into the coupler. Hammer the axle into the coupler. 
Grind down the outer edge of the axle in order to then snug up the bolt onto the axle. Weld the supplied nut into place and ground off any excess slag. Fit the motor onto the mounting and tap the release pin into place. Remove the vice grip and tighten up all mounting bolts. Weld the coupler onto both the original axle and the replacement axle. With the bolts tightened down and the axle welded, bolt the stainless motor cover onto the motor using the self-tapping screws that come with the cover. Slip the boot covers onto the positive and negative terminals of the motor cord and hand tighten them down. By using the couplers, connect the different pieces of PVC pipe in preparation for installation. Feed the wires through the PVC pipe. Mount the PVC pipe using the two hole straps and attach them to the trailer using number three Phillips self-tapping screws. With the PVC pipe secured at the motor end, slide the shrink wrap onto the motor wire and connect the motor wire to the conduit wire. Slide the shrink wrap over the connectors and with the torch, shrink wrap the connectors securely together. Take up as much slack as you can in the motor side of the wiring. Tighten the posts on the motor and cover them with the terminal boots. Attach another two hole strap to clamp the PVC pipe. Use additional couplers to connect the PVC pipes including straight and angled to run the electrical wires the rest of the way to the front of the trailer. Wires can also be started from the front of the trailer and run to the PVC pipe wires. Each brand of trailer is unique. As with every connection, run shrink wrap up one end before mating the wires together and shrink wrap them securely. Once all the wires are connected from the motor to the front of the trailer, secure any additional wires with zip ties. Next, run a wire from the front of the control panel through the front of the trailer wall in order to connect the wire. An inch and a quarter size hole will need to be made for the wire connector and controller connector to go through. Attach the rubber grommet to protect the wire from sharp edges. The entire system, including the lock and release system and the lockdown electric tarp system, are controlled by the manual switch box that can be located either in the truck cab or on the trailer itself. In this example, the manual switch box will be mounted towards the center of the trailer. You'll first need to run the wire with the connector by following the same wiring path as the wires used to power the lock and release motor. At the front of the trailer, Run the connector through the same hole as the motor wires and connect to the front control panel. To mount the manual switch box, you'll need to first drill two holes to be able to attach the universal mounting bracket. Use the bracket as a template for the hole location. Then, with a 3 8 inch drill bit, drill the holes. Using the two 2 and 3 8 inch button head steel bolts, insert them into the drilled holes. Mount the bracket into place and tighten down using the 732nd Allen wrench. And tighten down using lock washers and shoulder nuts using a 9 16th inch socket. To mount the box to the universal bracket, use the 3 16th self-drilling number three Phillips head screws and fasten the box to the bracket. With the manual switch box mounted and plugged in, open the box lid. Then press and hold the on button for five seconds. Now all the functions of your system can be controlled from this location. Simply push the open and close buttons marked for each feature your system has. Switching to manual crank is easy. On the motor, unplug the wiring, pull the cotter pin out, pull out the motor from the shaft and slide out the release pin. The manual crank fits into the nut so that the hopper door can then be manually opened and closed. You will also have a wireless remote that is pre-programmed to your control box. If you lose your remote or to set up a new wireless remote, open the lid of the front of the control panel. In the center is a button. Push and hold until the red light comes on and release the button. 
After the red light goes off, press and release any button on the remote control. The light on the panel will come back on again. Wait for it to go back off. Then, on the remote control, hold the on button for five seconds. The motor will jump, indicating that it is on. You have two different ways to control both your hopper doors and your roll tarp system. With the lock and release systems, you will have years of carefree operation. If you have any further questions, please contact Sioux City Tarp at 888-258-6939.